Are you using landing pages in your real estate business to generate leads and are you using them properly? So today I want to talk about all things landing pages and I want to do this video because I recently just got this question from a client saying, I have landing pages, I know how to build them, I just don't know when and how to use them. So what I wanna do in this video is to alleviate all confusion when it comes to landing pages. I wanna show you what a landing page is, when we use them, how we use them, how we build them, what content should go on there, and I'm also gonna show you how to promote them. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you several examples of how to implement landing pages in into your real estate business that will actually convert leads into clients, clients into closed deals, and grow your real estate business and take it to the next level. So if you wanna learn more, let's dive in. Hey everybody, it's me, Jacob Sharman, your real estate marketing expert. I have over 15 years of marketing experience specializing in web design and SEO, and I take that experience to help you grow your real estate business. So if you'd like to see more content like this, subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I release new training and content like this. And if you wanna get my resources, training, and courses for free, take a look at partnering with me at EXP Realty inside the Wolfpack, and there's a link below where you can book a call with me to see what that looks like. So let's dive into today's topic. So today we're talking about landing pages and how to use them, especially landing pages that convert. Like I said in the beginning, I got this question from a client and as I thought about their question, I realized even people in my own team, even though they have all these resources, they're still not using landing pages correctly. And looking at other realtors' websites and their marketing, they're still not using landing pages correctly, especially when they have something like KV Core that will build the landing pages for them. So why is that? And I think it's because people don't really understand what a landing page is and when to use it. And they get confused all the time between websites, funnels, landing pages, and how to use them. So that's what I wanna to cover today so you can leave here knowing 100% when to use a landing page, how to build one, and how to drive traffic to that landing page and convert leads and get more clients and more closed deals to grow your business. So let's start with the first one. All right, so my first tip today is understanding what is a landing page and its function. Now landing pages are different from websites and funnels. Even though they have the same functionality, they are web pages, but the use and the intention of using them is very different. A website tends to bring in traffic and generate traffic with SEO and contains the hub of all of your marketing and information. And a funnel is just a step-by-step -step series of pages that take your client through a process. So whether that's to get their lead and then onboard them as a client and let them search for properties, there's a step and a progression in that. A landing page, however, has one intention, one conversion type, and that could be to download a buyer's guide, uh, search this list of homes you know that are coming soon or just listed. There's one conversion goal, and that is to usually capture their information. But unlike a web page, landing pages help alleviate distraction. When somebody's on your website, there's so many things to click around. They can get a home evaluation, they can search for properties, they could read your blog, they could send you a message. They're all over the place. And that serves its purpose as well. But when somebody gets to your landing page, they're not forgetting why they came. So we wanna use landing pages when we want to convert and have one main call to action and one conversion goal, like I mentioned. So tip number two is to keep it simple. Keep your content simple, keep your layout simple. You should have just very nice graphics, clean text that gets to the point of what you're trying to do for them. So if they're there to download a buyer's guide, tell them why your buyer's guide what they're gonna get if they download it, and then quickly get them to the button that says download now. And the reason why is they're gonna get distracted, they don't care about all of that information, just give them enough to get them to download it and give up their information. And also your lead capture forms, keep those simple. Don't ask for a ton of information. I can't tell you how many times I've seen even marketing people or so-called marketing people 
ask 20 questions and think that they're going to generate a lead from that. Now that can serve a place, but you want to do that after you've established some rapport with them. So I just recommend if you're doing, you know, a buyer's guide um, or a seller's guide or anything like that, you just get the first name and email address. And in my CRM, you have to have the first name. You can't just get an email address. If you're doing maybe a list of homes or something like that, you could try to get the mobile number, but I wouldn't require it because a lot of people might not just be ready to give you that information. Remember, this is a pull marketing and it will always work better and bring you a higher quality of leads. So if you're gonna have search options on there to search for properties, keep that simple as well. Just remember, everything you're doing, just ask, is this simple? They should be able to get through that in 30 to 60 seconds and be able to get to the resource or the reason why they've came to that landing page. Tip number three is compelling content. So as we're building our landing pages, we need content. You can't just put buyer's guide download now. Now some people might, but some people might not know what a buyer's guide is. What's the purpose of downloading it? Why should they give you their email address, okay? So you want to have compelling content that is simple, that gets to the point. Remember, people don't like to read. They have very short attention spans nowadays with things like TikTok and Instagram where they can just scroll as much, as quickly as they want. So remember, you only have 30 seconds to really capture their attention and get them to give up their information so you can get that as a lead. So there are five things that you want to include when you're doing your content. You want your clear, unique selling proposition. So that is, why is this buyer's guide or why is this list of homes? Why should they get access to it? So you want to have that. And so usually that's your heading. And then you have a subheading that kind of summarizes it a little bit more as well. And then you also want to have your, what they call your engaging hero shot. So maybe a picture of yourself or a picture of the actual guide, uh, maybe some screenshots of it, or, the, um, you know, some of the homes that are in that list that you're wanting to give them. So whatever um, you're doing for your landing page, make sure you have that engaging hero shot. Your picture should be on there about working with you and explaining who you are, your knowledge, so they can connect with you. Don't use a ton of generic uh, kind of stock photos. Maybe if you're showing pictures of homes and things like that, make sure they represent your area, but make sure you have good engaging hero shots or a video, which would be even better, people tend to watch more video than they read. And then you wanna have the compelling benefits. Why download this guide? Why get access to this list? If it's a list, it's, you know, this list is updated, is the most up-to-date list. It's more up-to-date than Zillow or Trulia.com or this buyer buyer's guide takes my, you know, 10 years of experience and shows you exactly how to navigate the steps of buying a home. So whatever those benefits are to that, maybe you have coupons in there, maybe you have a list of movers and other professionals that they need, that is a great um, benefit to, to compel to them. And then you wanna give social proof. Put some testimonials of people that you've worked with in the past that loved your services so it shows that, hey, people have used them, they can go check out your Google reviews to verify those, that you didn't just make those up. And, you know, that will get people to want to do business with you more. And then you have to have a strong call to action. Don't just put submit, put download now or get free access now or some, some kind of strong call to action, whether that's in your header of the call to action section or in the copy or in just the button itself. But please have a call to action. I can't tell you how many times I look at websites and social media posts that have zero call to action and the user is probably looking at this post going, what was the point of it? What are they supposed to do next to be able to work with you or get a home like that? So Really think about your call to actions and keep your content simple as well. Tip number four is lead capture forms. I've seen people with landing pages that have no lead capture form. The whole point of downloading a buyer's guide or giving them a list or uh, maybe even doing a webinar is to get them to give up their information. And so many realtors out there are giving that information for free without getting anything in return. So in my landing pages, I make sure somebody gives me their information and I make sure that information is valid. So 
Um, if somebody's downloading my buyer's guide, they fill out the form. They give their first name, their email address, and then when they click download now, there's a message that comes up that says, please check your email address that you provided. There will be a link to download that guide. Guess what? If they gave me a fake email address that they don't have access to, they're not getting my guide. I've seen so many people just click download now and it redirects them to the guide or they enter their e email address and then they redirect them to the guide. So most people are going to give you a fake email. So in order to get an email that they can actually check, you need to do this. And this is super popular. If you do sign up for any type of accounts, they make you before you can really start to fully use that account. They make you go click the link in the email to verify that that is your email address. So users are already used to this. So make sure you do that and you don't send out that information until you have verified that that is their email address that they provided. Now, if you're going to send people to a landing page that already has, maybe it's a squeeze page of homes under, you know, 300,000 and you don't want to ask for their information, you want them to see the list first. What you want to do is limit the access to that list. And you can do this in most CRMs like KV Core, where they can only view one or two properties before it forces them to register. And if they go to click on a third property, it's going to keep forcing them. Or they look at more than two photos, it forces them to register. So they can't get complete access to this list. They can only see the first two properties or one property or whatever you want to set it. But make sure you have that setting in place as well. All right, tip number five is tools to build a landing page. So now we know what we need in our landing page. How do we build it? And there's several things out there. A lot of CRM or IDX website um, uh, tools that you have access to, like Showcase IDX, Chime, KV Core, they already have landing page and squeeze page builders in there. So you can utilize something like that. Um, if you have, if you're using something like Mailchimp, Constant Contact, Active Campaigns, ConvertKit, a lot of these email marketing uh, softwares out there already have built-in landing pages. So the moment you create the landing page, it goes into your email list, and you can set up a Zapier too that automatically imports all of those email leads into your CRM as well. You can also use things like WordPress, Wix, Weebly to build landing pages as well. Or you can hire a professional. So if you need somebody to build a series of landing pages, you can go to Fiverr, Upwork, hire a marketing company. You can hire a marketing company like myself. I have a full service marketing company and I'll leave all that information in the description below. Or you can use my real estate website system. I have a complete system that properly utilizes a real estate website, your sales funnels, and your landing pages all in one. So you have one place to think about and you don't have to use all these different tools. So if you're interested in that, I'll include a link to a live demo below as well. But get your landing page built and then I'm gonna tell you how to actually use these. So tip number six is examples of landing pages. So we've learned what landing pages are, the content, how to build them, but when do we use them and what can we use them for? So one of the most popular is downloadable guides. So maybe you have a buyer's guide, a seller's guide, a first time home buyer's guide, a guide to rental properties, a guide to being a landlord, a real estate investor. There's so many downloadable guides you can do. And you can have downloadable guides on niches as well. So if you're in the luxury space or relocation guide, uh, moving you know, to your area. So a lot of people are moving to Houston from a lot of the more expensive states. And so you could have a relo relocation guide on everything you need to know about moving to Houston. Um, you can do a list of homes. So you could do a landing page that does a list of homes for homes under a certain price. Maybe people are looking for a competitive price in your area. You could do a home of luxury listings or exclusive listings. You could do a home a list of homes that are just listed or coming soon. The one that worked really well for me when I was a new agent, I was able to generate 60 leads within my first month doing around $10 a day on Facebook. And I ran just one ad on a list of homes, and I believe it was in Sugarland, a list of um, upcoming open houses. And then basically what I did was I just went and did a search on my IDX website, did single family homes and townhomes. And then I put um, 
open houses. And I wanted to click on that list of open houses for that area. And so basically what happens is every time when they get that email uh, with that link, every time they click it or refresh it, it's going to have the most up to date because I also set that um, search result to filter by newest listing. And that URL that you copy, it has all those parameters of the filters that you applied. And every time they click it, it automatically applies them. So you don't have to manually create a list as well. So you can also do it for around listing their home. So why use you as a, a listing agent? or why a for sale by owner should use a real estate agent. So you could create a landing page um, and information around that or a guide about that. You could also do, um, are you curious about what your home is worth? And then you could put a home valuation tool from your IDX website and you can make sure that they don't download that CMA before they give their information as well. And then another thing that is really popular are webinars. You can create a landing page for webinars. Again, first time home buyer, buyers, relocating, um, investing, um, you know, uh, renting. Uh, the one we're doing is basically um, a home buyer seminar for veterans and how they can use their VA loan and why it's such a good option, how they can get into a home with 0% down and other benefits like um, limited property taxes or no property taxes. So I brought in a mortgage agent and a closing agent. We broke up the seminar and we recorded it and we put it on an automated webinar platform and people can go to the landing page and register. So these are some specific uses that you can create these landing pages to generate more leads, especially when you're trying to target uh, your target audience or the niche that you're in. All right, last tip number seven, and that is how to promote your landing pages. So how do we drive traffic? Because remember, landing pages don't bring traffic or generate traffic, it just processes it. So if we want to bring in traffic to that funnel, we need to promote it ourselves. And one of the first ways to do that is social media. I can't tell you how many times I see people post on social media with no call to action. So if you're talking about real estate things, make sure there's a call to action. What's the point of posting this? Now, you don't have to say, if you're ready to buy or sell a home, contact me. No, but maybe you're talking about homes for sale in that area under 300,000 and you put in a few photos of homes. Include that URL in your bio or in the link of that post as a call to action. Say, check out the most up-to-date list of homes under $300,000 in Houston and include that link. Or maybe you're talking about one of your buyer's guides, your seller's guide, or maybe you're doing a post about investing in real estate. You can lead them instead of saying, work with me, take them to your buyer's guide, everything you need to know on real estate investing and link them to that landing page as well. The next thing you could do is run paid ads. So maybe you could do Facebook and Instagram, Google ads, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok. There's so many uh, ways to advertise out there. And so you can run an ad and link to that landing page depending on the type of landing page that you're using from our previous examples as well. And a free way to do this is posting to your blog. So if you're utilizing blogs like I've told you, maybe you're talking about, you know, first time home buyer incentives in your area or uh, five home buyer tips, you can include a link or a section or a call to action to the landing page to download that buyer's guide. So it will re redirect them to that. They would enter their information and then be able to download that buyer's guide. So blogs are a great way to not only link to your landing pages on your website to help a little bit with SEO, but it's a great way to naturally in that content redirect them to free resources to keep them interested on that topic that they found you for. So I hope this information was helpful. I hope it helps you get a better understanding of landing pages and when to use them so you can generate more leads for your real estate business. If you have any questions about what I went over or maybe there's topics that you would love to see, go ahead and drop those in the comments below or reach out to me. My contact information is there as well. And if you need help with this, consider um, hiring my marketing company. We could definitely help you as well. We are a full service marketing company from web design to branding to video editing. We do it all. And if you are interested in a real estate website, funnels and landing page system, 
Um, I'll include the link to my live demo below. It's all you need to be able to grow your real estate business and to properly use each one of those things and not get misled. Like some people want you to go buy their funnel system or get a website or just get landing pages. It properly incorporates all of those together using my 15 years of experience in web design. And if you'd like to get it for free, you can take a look at partnering with me here at eXp Realty inside the Wolfpack and get all of my resources, training and courses for free. So make sure you stay up to date on all content that I release by subscribing to my channel, giving this video a like and hitting that notification bell. And I will see all of you in the next video.